man, 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 man. Help! <laughs> I am a god! Welcome to Top 10 Plays for the month of July. Hope everyone's doing well. The submissions have been extra spicy lately. So if you'd like to submit your own clips next time, I'll explain how at the end of the video. But for now, let's dive right in at number 10. German comes in at number 10, foolishly wielding the dancer's enchanted swords. There's moments where even sick fashion can't save you. As is the two against one situation, he swaps to the Black Knight Great Axe, which I've seen people use a lot more lately, and rightly so. It's a fantastic weapon. He's doing a good job positioning, rolling between the greatsword thrusts and chaos pyromancies. Oh, that was hot. <laughs> the Black Knight Great Axe really is cementing its legacy as a combo machine. The combo in this case, catching both of them with a normal swing into the Warcry weapon art and picking up the double kill. At number 9, Alatar considers himself a decent sorcerer. The arena duel he set me features a very diverse caster with pyromancy, sorcery and miracles, with a demon scar weapon in the offhand, which acts as a pyro flame, and the crystal chime main hand, which is used to cast both miracles and sorceries. Builds like this require a smooth control. You have to spin like a dancer so that not all your homing soul mass and affinities blow at once. It's all about delaying the timings to catch your opponent as they roll. And Alatar is using Twisted Wall of Light, which deflects and warps spells around it. You might not have caught that. It's a very rare sight, but worth pointing out. Alatar's Homing Crystal Soul Mass actually deflected the opponent's Dung Pie back at his feet. but I'm impressed with this Magic Knight build. It's very cool, it's made very well. It'd be great to see two of them against each other. I think that would look great. You'd think there wouldn't be any new challenge runs considering all the crazy things we've seen in the past, but the Edgelord here is not moving. And by not moving, I mean he's not using the right analog stick on his controller. So he's attempting to beat the Blood Staff Beast in Bloodborne without rolling, dodging, running or walking. First thing I really loved about this idea was how he figured out to change direction. He does this with the monocular item, zooming in on the direction he wants his character to turn. He moves with the threaded cane in the beginning because it covers a lot of ground, but switches to the saw cleaver with fire paper once the beast arrives. It looks so strange seeing a Bloodborne character just standing still, distracting the beast with pungent blood cocktails and taking advantage of its weak fire defences. Quite an impressive feat, especially at the lowest blood level of 4 and such a fitting challenge for someone named the Edgelord. Lunar Herent is invading into the profaned capital. There's a host in Sambro struggling against the toxic swamp and the creepy monstrosities of sin contained within it. He goes for the most savagely simple move possible and launches an undead hunter charm at the Sambro, preventing him from healing. Poor guy attempts to heal twice, but regrettably chokes to death on the toxic fumes. The host then avoids two throws, but is hit with the last remaining charm, sealing his fate. Why are we still here? Just to suffer? If you laughed at those two deaths, you're a terrible person by the way. Nah, sometimes, like the host, you just have to take the L, accept the loss, and get eaten by a hand monster. Moho Brothers is invading in the painted world of Ariandel as a mound maker. He sent me four clips of him doing the same strategy to multiple players. Sometimes there's a team, 
Sometimes there are dark moons and sometimes it's just a solo host. So this is the area with the living tree women and one of the weeping willows causes a secret ladder to appear on death. At the top of this ladder is an overhanging ledge and Moho has realized that if you position just right with a repeating crossbow you can blast off any host climbing up with splintering bolts. It's so nice to see these little snapshots of how differently some players choose to play the game. Some people have really unique strategies and methods to get the victory. Number 5 is with M in the Crucifixion Woods, a really short clip against the Farron Watchdog. So this was a swapping masterclass. Occasionally a controversial technique in terms of usefulness, but menu swapping has remained a popular skill throughout the years, and in this case he swapped his ring, all armour pieces and his weapon in between the parry and riposte. I might be wrong, we've seen a few, but I think that's the most pieces changed in a parry swap for Dark Souls 3 that we've seen so far. Adam Rhubarb comes in at number 4 with a submission that threw me for a spin. Just watch this. His people need him, this poor host had to answer the heavenly call. I think what happened was the host disconnected on the way down which just caused this floaty latency weirdness. But I must admit, and I bet you did too, I half expected the host to get back up and pwn him. The main is invading into Ulusil Township in Dark Souls 1, and let's pause right here. An interesting fact about spawning in in Dark Souls is that the first action you take is always invisible to any existing players. So the ganking team here won't see his attack animation for the Grant Great Hammer explosion. The team is now rocked both physically and in terms of their confidence. Everyone seems to be stacking poise like there's no tomorrow, including the next invader to spawn in, balancing the invasion from a 3v1 to a 2v2 back up against the wall to heal so the summon can't backstab, punishes the attempt with a predicted parry, Wrath of the Gods stun into a finisher, cheeky smack on the stone railings there to assert dominance, And the gank ends in disgrace, with the host forfeiting, the main using some advanced PvP mechanics at the end there to take the win. A backstab escape into a parry backstab, both quite complicated moves, but that's why you practice them. We've got a very high ranking Bloodborne clip this week. A player called the Earthquake invades a team in the Nightmare Frontier and things escalate quickly. An unbelievable triple kill with the Snake Driver transformed R2. That has the longest charge time of any attack in the game. But the lead elixir put him in that position, gave him the resistance he needed to weather the storm. Very satisfying to see that triple kill and he was actually one hit from death as well if you watch it back closely. Seek 37 takes the number one spot this month with a setup that just reeks of trickery and deception. There's items on the floor to share and everyone's having a grand old time, except for those suspicious silver knights. I 
I went back and checked and this miracle, dead again, hasn't actually been featured in a top 10 for 5 years or so. This is such a rare miracle that there's a good chance a lot of you don't know it exists. Casting it causes up to 3 corpses, in this case the Silver Knights, to explode dealing massive damage. The damage dealt is based entirely on your faith stat and Sig37 has the max faith of 99 for this reason. Fun fact, each exploding corpse deals around 800 dark damage each. So these poor unsuspecting invaders got hit with around 2400 damage which obviously they were not prepared for. If you guys got tricked by a host you thought was friendly like this, would you be mad? I don't know, I think I'd find it quite funny personally. Thanks so much to the July submitters. I don't know how many people watch these outros, but I do want to say I'm loving this monthly top 10 schedule. It's been great. I do plan to update the Prism Stone number transitions for this series. A bit like I did for the Demon Soul set, which I think looks sick. So I'll be filming some new ones for next month. As for how to submit your own clips, I say this every time, so I'll just put it on screen. You can pause it and have a read. And meanwhile, I'm going to end with a list of new things I've done recently. First thing, <laughs> I tried haggis, would not recommend, tasted like old boot. I fed alpacas at an alpaca farm, that was pretty wild. I also started playing Hollow Knight. Why haven't I played this game before? It's literally god tier. Anyways, that's all for this month. Subscribe for more and I'll see you next time.